The Republic was founded 68 years ago when on September 23rd, 1868, our ancestors proclaimed our independence from Spain. They solemnly affirmed that the revolution was founded on no complaints against our motherland. Puerto Rico was rich in name and in reality. Our Christian heritage has created a model family and a solid society. That nation was the vanguard of modern civilization. Great men in all fields of human conquest brought honor to the land of, of their birth. Privileged intellects like Stoll and Tengians in the natural science. More Campos, the musical genius. Oler and Campeches, master of painting. Great thinkers like Ostos. Poets by pure spirituality like Guerter Benitez, great seamen like Admiral Ramon Power, fighters for the freedom of the new world like Marshal Valero and General Ruiz Rivera, noble seamen and patriots like Pentances, and spiritual leaders of a generous, hospital and peaceful nation like Bishop Arismendi. It was these prestigious figures from among the legions of great men and women of a nation, of a nation who for three centuries uh, served as a foundation for the expansion of Christian civilization in the Americas. It must not be forgotten that the expedition for Puerto Rico under the command of Juan Ponce de Leon planted the cross of the North American continent in 1531, a hundred years before the founding of Jamestown, Virginia. The founders of the Republic in 1868 fought only for the principle that no nation shall be master over the destiny of another nation. This principle is the basis of international law and universal civilization and cannot be violated under any pretext. It is the principle of human dignity formulated so that it implies to the family of nations. Spain, the motherland, the Fondi Hidalgo of modern universal civilization, recognized this fundamental principle of international relations as our forefathers of 1868 explained it, and conceded to Puerto Rico the autonomous Magma Carta by virtue of which relations between Spain and Puerto Rico were to be regulated through treaty thus recognizing our country as a sovereign, free, and independent nation. This recognition of our place in the family of free nations was irrevocable and blinding of all powers that could never be placed at the mercy of the vicissitudes of our motherlands or any other wars. The Treaty of Paris, imposed by forces on Spain by the United States on April 11, 1899, is known and voiced as pertains to Puerto Rico. For this reason, the military intervention of the United States in our fatherland is simply one of the most brutal and abusive acts of perpetual and contemporary history. We demand the withdrawal of the armed forces of the United States from our soil as a national and legitimate defense of Puerto Rican independence. We are not as fortunate as our forefathers of 1868. They fought for the pure principle of national sovereignty. They have no complaint against the motherland Spain. Eh, eh, okay, no. Uh, we must make demands against the United States of North America, such as intensification for the enormous damage systematically and cold blooded perpetuate against a peaceful and defenseless nation. Puerto Rico's favorable commercial balance during the 35 years of North American military intervention is approximately $400 million. According to this imposing figure, Puerto Rico should be one of the planet's richest and properest countries. In fact, property as our patrimony. This money is the power of the citizens of continental North America. We calculate considerably the financial values of the commercial monopoly forcibly imposed on us by the United States, by virtue of which we are forced to sell our merchandise to the North Americans at the price they set and add what we must pay for North American merchandise at whatever price the North Americans want to impose on us. We are right at the figure no less than $50 million. The result of this pitiless exploitation and the abuse perpetrated against our nation are made evident through the universal poverty, the illness, and the elevated mortality rates of our population, the highest in the Americas. 76% of our national wealth is in the hands of a few North American corporations for whose benefits alone the present military government is maintained. 
A stupid assault has been made on our Christian social order in a brutal effort to dissolve our family structure and destroy the morality of a noble race, impulsively a governmental agency, the spread of prostitution, of the deceitful banner of birth control, the ridiculous effort to destroy our Hispanic civilization within a system of public education, a use in the United States to enslave the masses, the mad arrogance of claiming to spirituality guide a nation whose soul was forged into Pierce Christianity. There are more serious complaints. In Puerto Rico, the United States of America is a confrontation face to the face of the spirit of Lexington, of Zaragoza, of Ayuyucho. The present imperialist policy by which they want to dissolve nationalism through terror and assassination is a provocation and an act of imperialist foolishness aim at the satisfying a handful of North American corporations, the people of the United States, if they had not become totality insensitive to the principle that allowed them to be a free nation, must show common sense, must be guided solely by their national interests. This national interest is guaranteed to respect the Puerto Rico's independence. They are the aspiration of Puerto Rican nationalism. Our political status. The United States of America is a sovereign nation. It is not a conglomeration of sovereigns. The premio of the North American Constitution reads, We, the people of the United States of America, in order to establish a more perfect union, etc. Juridically, the United States is a nation organized in one state in the true meaning of the term. Despite the living political reality that represent by Southern nationalism with its aspirations and ideals, its heroism and martyrs, its memories inspired by more than half a North American political body. For erudite writers like the historian Virginia Pollard, the Southern Confederacy is an ideal. For people like them to change, change the arms of the Civil War resolves nothing. Nevertheless, the North American Constitution is juridical the will of one sole sovereign. Politically, the country is divided into provinces that for historical reasons were poorly named states in order to facilitate the derogation of the original confederation and the approval of the present constitution. The postulate of national unity that informs the North American Constitution has determined the invariable rule that no territory shall be admitted as a state until Anglo-Saxon or Anglo-Celtic elements have obtained definitive ascendancy. The racial, religious, and cultural elements are primordial in considering the possibilities of a mission of a community to statehood or as a province. Puerto Rico is the most perfect nationality in the new world. It is the true social unity, despite being made of nearly 70% Spanish blood, Catholicism has destroyed every deep racial division. This Christian nation sprang out under the Aggies of the cross 100 years before Jamestown was founded. Culturally, this nation considered itself one of its hemisphere depositories of Greek Latin civilization. This consciousness is so profound that we consider this privilege as natural and our scientific national contact, based on our feeling of collective responsibility, cannot be taken as a renunciation either of this glorious patrimony or our destiny. From the Puerto Rican point of view, statehood or annexation which whether uh, whatever form signified the transformation of our international personality, by virtue of this Puerto Rico will become a geographic name, our nation will be persistent into the maelstrom of North American politics and social geography. And international problems with no advantage for us. What is more, in the view of the absolute impossibility of transforming this Hispano-American nation into an Anglo-American community, it is absurd to occupy ourselves with statehood, since such a pretension is equivalent to asking the people of the United States to destroy its national unity. Two Puerto Rican senators and new deputies in the U.S. Congress will become the arbitrators of the fate of the United States at some critical moment in the life of, the, of that nation. 
to point of view of this Puerto Rican representation in the international affairs, especially as concerned Latin America, will invariably be contrary to the traditional North American point of view. In the internal affairs of the United States, our people will never see things as they are seen by North Americans. This perennial incomprehension will be invaluable despite the best good, will, and sense of justice for the traditions that fix of national, social, or international perspective cannot be fundamentally altered for reasons of convenience. These are the fundamental reasons against the absurd idea of statehood for Puerto Rico. The supposed economic reason against statehood, lack of basis, Puerto Rico is a rich country, could sustain statehood or independence. Our country presents an area of approximately 4,000 cuadradas, or 10,000 square kilometers. It sustains a population of almost 2 million inhabitants. It is the United States' second largest market in this hemisphere and the sixth in the world. Our productive cap capacity is obviously great. These are the economic facts under the present regime of our irresponsible government that functions for the exclusive benefits of four or five obscene corporations resigned in the United States, though it is impossible to determine the nationality of these shareholders under the responsible government of the Republic of Puerto Rico, when they inherit freedom to negotiate commercial treaties on the basis of reciprocity, our economic production would necessarily increase aside from statehood. The Constitution of the United States only considers the responsible forms of government. For example, martial law in any state or territory in case of rebellion or foreign nation and the territorial form of government. Using North American judicial terms of Puerto Rico, it defined as an unincorporated territory, which is a possession but not part of the United States. To be sure, this absurd dream is incomprehensible, but it is the judicial definition of the tribunals of the United States. Nevertheless, with all the respect to this judicial authority, this means that in Puerto Rico must be governed like any other territory. That is with the irresponsible government with all the evils and calamities, oppressions and tyranny available in a government of this nature. So it's not strange that the system of irresponsible government implanted in the soundest state of the United States during the period called the Reconstruction could only be attacked by force. Arkansas had to suppress the territorial form of government in the same way. If in this regime the interests in place want to perpetuate in the face of independence, they pretend to defend statehood, but in reality, they hate this status as well. In the judicial definition made to the tr tribunals of the United States, it is declared that Puerto Rico is not part of the United States. This conclusion is true. The Treaty of Paris, by virtue of which the United States claimed to govern this country, is known and void as related to Puerto Rico. The present regime is essentially a military intervention that functions with the exclusive benefits and abstain corporations that want to reduce this nation to the cruelest of economic slaveries. This government is administered in the name of the people of the United States. It has at its disposal the armed forces and the resource of the nation. They even exploit the humanitarian instinct of the American people for this end. Since Puerto Rico is a very rich country, the obscene corporation established here carry out propaganda in North America press in order to induce the innocent North American people to support this regime of economic exploitation through the falsehood that is for the good of the poor people of Puerto Rico. This press propaganda is systematic and is carried out the intention of clouding North American public opinion, the current military intervention prejudice, the vital interests of the North American people. The United States as a nation assumes an enormous responsibility in maintaining this tyrannical government with its long list of crimes in order to maintain slavery for the exclusive benefits of a few Epstein corporations. This public effect the vast vital interest of the United States in Latin America, which naturally feels itself to be in solitary with the cause of Puerto Rican independence. Independence means international relations of the pensions of the reciprocal stability. Before the North American invasion, more than 40% of our foreign commerce was with the United States. There is no reason why we can arrive at a friendly, mutual, suitable arrangement with the independence of Puerto Rico. 
was the executive power of the United States represented by its president, Mr. Franklin Roosevelt, has recognized the right of Puerto Rico to be an independent nation who can establish truly friendly relations between the two nations for their mutual benefits. In order to avoid dangerous situations inherent to every transitional period, the present regime must be liquidated without any delay by the Constitutional Convention and the Treaty of Commerce and a friendship between the two nations. Puerto Rico is a noble nation. It is the word once given and its guarantee of its credit, whatever the circumstances. Viva Puerto Rico Libre!